Ahi ahi pai, no mai hari mai, ko RNZ National TNA. Good afternoon, welcome. This is RNZ National. I'm Karen Hay. I'm here for Wallace Chapman on the panel this afternoon, and Wallace is isolating at home. Hope you're doing okay, Wallace. And before we start, a big thank you to all those essential workers around the country. Thanks very much to the cleaners who have deep cleaned the studio and they've made the whare kai, the kitchen, spotless. It really has never been so clean. I just spoke to a lovely woman who was masked up, bleaching the surfaces, and then she was dashing off to the supermarket to do the toilets. So thank you. Those are not easy jobs. And with me on the panel today, they're both on Zoom. Uh, Paula Penfold, journalist with Stuff Circuit at stuff.co.nz. Kia ora, Paula. Kia ora, Karen. And Dean Hall, CEO of video game studio Rocketworks. Kia ora, Dean. Kia ora. You're sounding good there. Oh, I've, got my, I've got my streaming set up on my good microphone. I've even got my camera and my lights on, but you can't yeah. see that. Yeah, I bet you have. Well, on the program today, it's all about home time at the moment. Scouts Aotearoa launches the Great Indoors for Locked Down Families, activities that you can do with children. And in a moment, the Chief Executive of Scouts NZ, Josh Tabor, joins us. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison included New Zealand in the statement that we can't bank on eliminating COVID now, now that the Delta virus is circulating. He says we can't stay in a cave. The US have confirmed they're getting their troops out of Afghanistan by August 31st and one of our panellists today, Paula Penfold, has written an opinion piece on this for stuff.co.nz with the headline, Why We Mustn't Shirk Our Responsibility to Afghanistan. Paula with her opinion, of course, and we'll be speaking to Law Professor Al Gillespie. A 24-year-old from Whanganui, Geordie Beamish, he's the toast of the town after he won the mile race at the Prefontaine Classic meet in Oregon in the US. But it's really how he won that race that made it a classic. And an old coach of his from Whanganui, Alec McNabb, is with us. And uh, that track meet was in the US, but how's exercise been going for you in lockdown? Have you been running or is it just an amble in the streets? In Auckland here, it's so busy with people walking and running that it's really hard to get the required two metres away from them. Let me know what it's like where you are. The text here is 2101. And sad news today, he grew up in Wembley in London. He trained as a graphic artist and he drummed for the Rolling Stones. Charlie Watts has died aged 80 and Graham Reed joins us to look back at his life and career. And at the moment, there's a lot of anxiety among students who are sitting exams this year and trying to do their schoolwork from home. NZ Qualifications Authority says NZEA changes could be made if necessary. Well, Principal Claire Amos is with us. And while some of us have been out running, not me, others have taken to drinking a little more to relieve both the stress and the boredom of lockdown. And there's been a rise in alcohol sales and lockdown deliveries. Professor Doug Salmon of Alcohol Action. So that's quite a full plate. Uh, if we get time. How's the wildlife going during lockdown? Magpies apparently are in nesting season and there have been reports of attacks on cyclists, so uh, we may talk about that. Quartle, oodle, ardle, waddle, doodle. I think that's right. <laughs> you can text us on 2101 and you can email if you like, the panel at rnz.co.nz. It's nine minutes to four and I'm with Paula Penfold and Dean Hall on Zoom. Paula, we're going to talk to the CEO of Scouts NZ. Were you ever a brownie or a girl guide? I I was. Gosh, the, it's quite a while ago now. Um, I don't think I became a girl guide. I was a brownie for a while, and I think it was called tweenies before then. I was um, not very good at it, I have to say. I didn't have many of those badges. Uh, now what about you, Dean? Cubs or Scouts? Uh, I was actually in the ear training corps. I was. I ended up being the warrant officer of the number twenty six Amaru squadron. So, if there's any any people out there from Oamaru who are in the ATC, that's where I was. Loved Which is it. the Warren squadron leader. Again, is that what you said? What did you say you were? No, no, a warrant officer. It's oh, a, warrant it's officer. A rank in, uh, yeah, so that ear training corps was a little, it uh, was like scouts, but it was maybe a little bit more structured, which, to be honest, was exactly what I need, needed when I was a teenager. Probably still needed a bit now, actually. Well, as you both may know, the Scouts' motto is be prepared, and Scouts Aotearoa have lived up to that. They've shared with the nation their top 12 ideas for parents who are looking for something to do with young people at home. The Great Indoors, which doesn't necessarily confine you to indoors, everything from finding interesting things to take photos of when you're going out for a walk to waving through a window, which I'm sure isn't as simple as that, or maybe it is. The Chief Executive of Scouts NZ, Joshua, Joshua Tabor, is on the line. Kia ora, Josh. 
Kira, Karen, how are you? Very well. How are you doing? Good. Uh, having a good lockdown so far, and the team's been busy preparing a bunch of ideas for parents across Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's a very helpful initiative. Are they tried and true activities? Yeah, they are. It's based on a, um, a lot of content that we've mastered over the last 113 years, and in particular, content that we provided parents um, some during the six-week lockdown last year. So it's been very successful, and there are a range of skill levels from five-year-olds to 26-year-olds, so something for everyone in there. So looking out a window, what does that in- incorporate? <laughs> Well, it's more a window display and giving kids and parents um, an opportunity to think through what they might put in the window and what they might share with the community. So each of these are designed to try and engage parents and young people and give parents some depth of activity to do when the kids are tired of the Zoom or they want something physically or active to do and they can do around their house. So the most popular so far has been nature art. Um, and followed by a three-way tie for the window display, taking things apart, how do things work, and building a boat. Building a boat out of whatever you've got at home. Exactly. Rummage that recycling bin and see what you can find and put a boat together and then sell test it at either the local community car park park with um, social distancing or in your bathtub if you have one or in a pool in the back. So how do you know they've been popular? Are you getting feedback? Yeah, we're tracking how many have been downloaded, and we're looking for feedback from parents. We're also offering parents uh, 24 additional activities, over the um, one per day over the next 24 days. We're using the feedback from what's um, of interest to parents, and we'll be building out those 24 ideas and sending them to parents one a day for the next 24 days. All they have to do is sign up for the email, and we'll make those free to them. So, in total, there are about 36 free activities for parents across Aotearoa if they want them. Okay, so how do they sign up? Where do they go? It's it's really simple. They just need to go to scouts.nz forward slash the hyphen great hyphen indoors hyphen. We didn't have time to shorten the URL, but that's um, I'm sure you can throw it up on the um, on the webpage. And that's all they have to do. The, there are 12 of them free, and if they sign up, they get an additional 24 activities over the next 24 days. Have you done them all? Uh, I've done a lot of them as a scout leader. I still volunteer. And it's been amazing as we've been introducing a new program and curriculum to help young people build their leadership skills, watching them bring ideas into the fold. So some of these are things that young people just love to do, but they don't necessarily get a chance to do. One of them on there is MasterChef and giving them a chance to practice their cooking skills at young age is just something they love. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Josh. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. That's the CEO of Scouts Aotearoa, Josh Tabor, and that's scouts.nz forward slash the hyphen great hyphen indoors. And if you want to look at those ideas, it's now four minutes to four, and I've been thinking. My guests this afternoon, jo- uh, journalist Paula Penfold and Dean Hall, who's the CEO from gaming studio Rocketworks. Paula, should we start with you? What's been on your mind? Just being uh, alarmed and not surprised, I suppose, in an awful way to read a story that's come through um, from my colleagues, staff colleagues in Nelson this afternoon, that family violence in that region has spiked since the beginning of lockdown and that Monday was their worst day ever for the Nelson Women's Refuge. And, you know, I, it's, it's a really stressful time, obviously, for everybody, but there are those for whom it's um, more stressful than others, those who are undergoing really um, uh, intense financial pressures, And when you put that all on top of drinking, which we'll talk about later, to excess and the kinds of tensions that exist, having to live under, you know, a roof altogether, uh, the the numbers are horrific. And the police are saying that they're seeing a spike in contacts too. I guess the message is, though, from both of them that, um, you know, even under lockdown rules, of course, you should get out if you are in danger. But it is really quite distressing to see that, There are refuges around the country talking about their worst days ever. Yes, and there was very little preparation for people mentally to get prepared for this either, even though, you know, we were sort of warmed up to the concept. It came very quickly, didn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. And with no opportunity for people to prepare. And I suppose, you know, it's... Maybe the first ones were there was something of a novelty value, but this one does feel a bit different to many people, doesn't it? And so 
it seems as though the pressures are being felt in a way that's too too much for some families to cope with and they're breaking. So, yeah, those figures are looking quite alarming already and we're only a week into it. And more to come. And Dean, what about you? What have you been thinking? So, uh, mine's a little bit of a cheat because I had mentioned it sort of previously in the panel, but I don't think it was during and I've been thinking. Uh, I really think that it's time for the government to announce a special service medal for COVID support. I'm pretty sure someone's probably looking into it. I, I certainly hope so. So my challenge to any MPs or policy people listening, draft it up and get it out there. We have uh, this army of people who, as I described it, are you know, keeping our bellies fed and the lights on. And I really think, I know it's just a token gesture, but recognition can take many forms. It's not just paying people properly, which is obviously very important and resourcing people and listening to them. But I think there is an importance to, even if it's symbolic, public acknowledgement of the work people do. And, and it would be difficult, a little bit difficult to figure out who would qualify for it. But, you know, I really think those essential workers, I, I, was, at, uh, I was at New World today and just seeing how hard the staff there were working, getting supplies in. It just it really felt like, it actually made me feel a bit better, actually, because I've been struggling a bit. And just seeing how hard all these people were working to make sure people were fed. I didn't see, you know, there was no one slacking off. Everybody was very serious. And I think that a good token gesture would be a special service medal for COVID. We've done it for things like uh, Antarctic support and things like that. Um, let's get out there, you know, as a country and, and do that. I, there's a few petitions around about it, but, you know, that's my challenge to any uh, government people listening. Go do that. We'll be back with the panel after the news at four, which is coming up in a moment. ACAST powers some of the world's best podcasts. Here's a show we recommend. The Unmistakable Creative gives you timeless practical wisdom for living a meaningful life. Listen to deep, meaningful conversations with creatives, misfits, rebels, and change makers. At their core, people don't believe that they're good enough. So they get into this whole fake it till you make it paradigm in order to gain the credibility that is going to lead to the attention that's going to lead to their success. Subscribe to The Unmistakable Creative wherever you get your podcasts. ACAST, 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 ACAST recommends. recommends.